happy Saturday. So a lot of strange turns of events as of lately. This weekend, I actually was supposed to be in Denver for the annual American Academy of Dermatology meeting that I go to every year. It's a big meeting where people from all over the world come to, to learn the latest and greatest in dermatology and network. I love going. Anyways, it obviously was canceled this year due to current events. So uh, yeah, I'm not there. Yeah, so many of the major medical association groups and meetings have been canceled this year. They tend to occur in the spring. I mean, they happen all year round, but the spring is kind of a heavy hitting time for them. Yeah, and with you guys in med school who are matching this year, entering the residency match, your match date, I wonder how that has affected you. Comment below on if you, on if you are matching this year. Um, but I hope everybody is in good health. That's the most important thing and that you guys are healthy and doing well. But anyways, hopefully today's video will be a little lighthearted for you guys. Um, I'm just gonna chit chat with you all and share with you guys some things that I've been loving lately, especially this past week. I don't know, things that I've really been enjoying. First of all is the coffee that I've been drinking. A viewer sent this to me. It's the community coffee brand, but it's the Mardi Gras King Cake Special Edition. This is really good. It's cinnamon and vanilla. I don't typically enjoy flavored coffees, but I have a soft spot in my heart for kind of cinnamon-y coffees because when I was a student, I used to hole up in Einstein bagels for hours upon hours studying, and I would drink their <laughs> uh, cinnamon coffee. It was like a French vanilla, but it had a cinnamon undertone, and this tastes exactly like it. It's really good. Yeah, I was surprised. I don't typically like these flavored coffees, but this is really good. I mean, it tastes it tastes delicious. It tastes like coffee has a nice vanilla cinnamon undertone to it. But yeah, I just actually ordered, I have some coffees coming to me. I do that uh, trade coffee. It's awesome, you guys. I totally recommend it. So I've got some coffees coming to me from there. So I'm looking forward to trying out some new ones. But anyways, um, skincare product update that I've been really loving. I recently finished the Curel cleansing oil. You guys will see that in my empties video if it's not up already. <clears throat> but I've been trying out and really enjoying the Inky List, the Oak Cleansing Balm. It is fragrance free, so that off the bat is a great, great attribute. And it's 10 bucks, I think, for this tube. As of this morning, it looked like it was sold out from Sephora and Ugh, other retailers. I kept the box so that I could make sure I got the ingredients right. Yeah, um, this is a cleansing balm. It has a variety of oils in it and it has some emulsifiers and that helps this product to be easily rinsed off from the skin. Now, you guys know I'm a huge fan of doing a double cleanse method for removing dirt, debris, cosmetics, sunscreen, etc. at the end of the day from your face. And the reason I like this method is that if you use a cleansing balm or cleansing oil, the oils in the balm or the cleansing oil itself help to start to dissolve the dirt and makeup off the surface of your skin, but they don't um, really disrupt the lipid barrier to the same extent as cleanser. They just kind of help in almost conditioning the skin while simultaneously breaking up all of that stuff. And then the second step is obviously to come on with a cleanser. And because you've already broken up a lot of the film and the gunk on your face, it's more efficient and you don't have to lather and scrub the face as much to get stuff off. And you almost have, it, pre, it preconditions the skin to help buffer against the drying effects of using a cleanser. So I really like this approach. I've been doing it for several years now. I have numerous videos reviewing different cleansing balms and cleansing oils and talking about why I like doing it. And I just do this in the evening time, like as my nighttime skincare routine, the double cleanse method. And I encourage you guys to wash your face in the night at nighttime either before you go to bed or just in the evening at the end of the day, whatever. The reason this is important is not only to remove whatever stuff you put on your face, but stuff settles on your skin, pollutants, dirt, aero allergens, needs to come off. And the best time to do it is at, is at night before you go to bed. You don't wanna go to sleep with that stuff on your skin. 
it's just not a good idea. Not only that, if you put on topical medicaments in the evening, whether it be tretinoin or something else that you've been prescribed and told to use in the evening, you want to do it on a clean face, at least in the evening. And I say at least, because some people want a hard and fast rule about the number of times a day you should wash your face, and there is no such rule. Like, I'm not going to tell you that a cop is going to come to your door if you happen to wash your face three times a day. But I encourage you, <clears throat> to be conservative with the number of times you cleanse your face a day because each time you cleanse your skin, you do disrupt the skin barrier and that can cause dryness, irritation, and skin problems. And it often requires you to come on with another product to remedy that situation. But people with really oily skin, they wake up in the morning and they feel like their skin is oily and greasy. They wanna kinda of degrease a little bit. And for those folks, cleansing again in the morning with a, a cleanser is fine. Um, their skin tolerates it. They have, they have kind of an oily film already on their skin from all the sebum that they make. And so they can handle that extra cleanse. But not everyone can get away with that. I don't need to and I don't do that. As a side note, if you use tretinoin at night, I mean, you should use tretinoin at night, but if you're using it, I always get questions, does it need to be washed off the following morning? No, there's like it doesn't. The only reason that you may have been advised to do that is if you're going through a lot of irritation with it in the morning and the provider wants you to shorten your contact time by washing it off the following day. And it's almost like an overnight tretinoin mask they're having you do in a sense. So for me, I just wake up in the morning and put sunscreen on my face and I'm good to go and you know mascara and my under eye sunscreen I don't really mess around with washing my face and I do a little bit of exercise in the morning but I don't work up a sweat and so I don't have that need to to rinse the sweat off of my skin I'm not sweaty the workout that I do in the morning is more of like a spot toning thing and I don't work up a sweat I mean there's air conditioning in the gym there's air conditioning in my apartment if I do a little toning routine in the morning um, so I don't work up a sweat that needs that sweat that needs to be rinsed off. But if you work out in the morning, you may want to wash your face again. You see how it's situational? There's no hard and fast rule. Some people benefit from just using a little water to cleanse their skin in the morning rather than using a, a cleanser. Um, it's much less irritating. But anyways, uh, this cleansing balm, you guys, I recommend. It's really good. It has uh, sweet almond oil in it. I've talked about that before in other videos. I always have reservations with sweet almond oil like what if somebody has a tree nut allergy would it cause problems but i have never encountered anybody any patients that have had issues with sweet almond oil or at least that can be traced directly to that and there's like one case report of sweet almond oil contact dermatitis in the medical literature so it, in other words it seems to be well tolerated and it also has sunflower seed oil in it which is really a good uh, well-established plant oil for sensitive skin and it's not likely to cause problems. And then it's got oats. Now oats, I've got a whole video talking about colloidal oatmeal, but oats, they are a rich source of beta-glucan humectants to hydrate the skin, but they also have a mild detergent property to them. So they're good at, cl they cleanse the skin, but they don't strip. They don't strip the lipid barrier. And in fact, they can help in boosting the skin barrier. They're really good. Uh, colloidal oatmeal is a really good ingredient in skincare products. Or doing a colloidal oatmeal bath. You can even use colloidal oatmeal, which they sell in a little package. You can reconstitute it, and you can actually use that as a cleanser. Um, so this has that in it. And then it's got emulsifiers in it. Specifically, it has a polyethylene glycol. Now that's what's going to help those oils after they've after you've lathered them to the skin. That's going to help. What's going to help? Uh, this product rinse off with water very easily and not leave a residue behind on your skin. Personally, I enjoy using just plain mineral oil on my skin as a oil-based cleanser. Alvaline, but those plain mineral oil, alvaline, uh, Vaseline, th those are all really good oil-based cleansing balm methodologies. The issue with those that many of you don't care for is that there are no emulsifiers in those products, so they can leave an oilier film behind. Um, in which case, you know, choose a product like this. It's a dedicated marketed balm or cleansing oil that has an emulsifier in it. They're polyethylene glycols, so they just kind of help marry oil with water, basically. They, they make the mayonnaise on your face. <laughs> But yeah, the Inky List, you know, I've really been happy with a lot of their products. I have used their, um, I tried out the Snow Mushroom and I actually enjoyed that. I mean, it wasn't a game changer for me. And I reviewed for you guys the Turmeric Mask. 
Their salicylic acid face wash is pretty good as well. What else have I tried? Oh, the Q10 serum. If you're interested in antioxidant serum, that was pretty good. Yeah. Um, I don't, oh, their kaolin mask is also a good one for oily skin. Yeah, they've got a lot of good products, um, basic products. A lot of the products, though, are, they seem like a good deal, but the bottles are, like, really tiny, and there's not actually a whole lot there that, in, the, in the bottle, so be careful there, but yeah. Oh, and I mentioned last weekend, was it, that I started this book, and I am really loving it. It's longer than it looks. Um, the pages have a lot of words on each page, so it's longer than it looks, but I've, I've really been loving this story and the characters in this and the things that they're going through. But with all of the emphasis on hand hygiene, which is super important, one of the most effective ways actually for reducing transmission of infectious diseases is washing your hands. Excellent, everyone should be doing it. And it's a great way to reduce the risk of transmitting viruses, etc. With all the hand washing though, your skin barrier on your hands can definitely suffer quite a bit because Water and cleansers, hand sanitizers, they do strip the lipids and proteins from the top layer of your skin, leave you predisposed to dryness, irritation. If, if you have eczema, a history of eczema, um, this, will, this can set off a bad flare actually of hand eczema. And so make sure that with all the hand washing that you're also moisturizing your hands. And a shout out to the Neutrogena fragrance-free version of the Norwegian hand cream. I love this stuff because it makes a, it's really nice and moisturizing. It really makes a nice protective barrier on the skin, but it doesn't leave a sticky residue behind. This is a game changer for me and hand care. And I, I've been using it for many years, strongly recommend it. And uh, yeah, that can definitely help. But if you were in a pinch and your hands are already dry and irritated, I recommend um, considering putting this on at nighttime before you go to bed and covering it with some white cotton gloves. You can get them. But sometimes Siri just interjects and I don't understand it. It's like, it's kind of creepy. I did some update on my iPad software or whatever. I don't know, because I just follow whatever that thing tells me to do blindly. And I don't know, it gave Siri some enhanced confidence and she just interjects randomly. And I'm not one, like I don't, I don't have, what is that thing that people are always talking to, that box that always like tells them things, Alexa, I don't have one of those. And I, I mean, no offense, like there's nothing wrong with those. I'm just not, I don't know. I'm such an introvert. I don't even want artificial intelligence <laughs> in my life. And so I never really talk to it, but sometimes it just interjects randomly and it's kind of creepy. It's really creepy. Big brother, <laughs> big brother. All right, anyways, yeah. Put this on it. Consider putting this on at nighttime before you go to bed and covering your hands with cotton gloves. You can get them at the drugstore. They're super cheap. Um, I'll list some down below for you guys. And that really can help in restoring your skin barrier much more expeditiously. Um, that works really well. Um, or for especially the nighttime thing, when you don't have to really care so much about getting sticky residue all over everything, just use plain petrolatum, 100% petroleum jelly Vaseline is the kind of branding of petrolatum. Just use that. You can get uh, medical grade petrolatum on Amazon, actually little packets that we use in clinic to put on to biopsy sites and whatnot. You can actually buy that same uh, petrolatum from Amazon. Um, or you can buy the Vaseline brand if, if that's available or like the drugstore generic version of Vaseline. Just make sure it says 100% petrolatum because there are a lot of Vaseline very Vaseline brand makes a lot of things that that are in the same kind of packaging, but they sneak in fragrance. <laughs> I'm wearing this little uh, faux fleece, whatever, pullover. This came from Fabletics. They no longer have it, I don't think, on their website, but there's some similar ones. Um, I'll see if I can't find one and list it down below for you guys. And then these little shorts from Fabletics too. Um, I love these. I think they still have these on there. Yeah, I really love these shorts because they have the little liner in them. So yeah, they're really comfy. Yeah, my earrings are just these little gold hoops. Oh, you may be wondering, why does she have a bedpan back there? It kinda looks like one, I'll show you guys.
Yeah, this bowl uh, was actually a gift. Um, it's by this brand, Ibili. Ibili? Ibili? Looks, that's, that looks like a Spanish brand for some reason. Um, yeah, I thought it was kind of cute. I think it's intended as like a little hand washing bowl, but I thought it'd be nice to put, if you have a TV, it'd be nice to store your remote controls in, but I don't, I don't have one, so I have to come up with something to put in there. Sunscreen bottles, <laughs> probably. Oh, but speaking of outfit of the day, this is what I was going to wear this weekend. Um, I got some shoes to go with that black dress that I got with my mom a while ago. Remember she was telling me I should get red. I actually got these jazzy blue shoes. They're really pretty. Um, I'm sad I don't, I'm not gonna be able to wear them this weekend like I thought, but I will find a time to wear them. Yeah, they're by this brand Bamboo. And I just thought they were cute. They're gonna be cute for summer. I think they'd look cute with like one of those, um, I have a black sort of jumpsuit onesie type thing along, that's pants. I thought it would be cute with that. I thought it'd be cute with just little dresses that are solid color and to get some matching blue earrings to go with it. I thought that looked cute. Yeah, it's brand Bamboo. I actually got these on Poshmark and they were really inexpensive. Have you guys ever purchased anything on Poshmark? I get some things on there from time to time and I've always been happy. I just specify new with tags and uh, I end up getting really good deals, basically stuff that's never been worn or used before. <clears throat> Bamboo is the company. Tybee's ready to put on his sunscreen. <laughs> he loves this little sunscreen, yeah, Chewy. He just had his annual checkup, right? He did? And he's healthy. He passed with flying colors. <laughs> <laughs> I got an A plus. Did they give you a sticker, Tybee? No. Yeah. He some biscuits. <laughs> she tried to give him uh, that cheese in a can. Yeah. When she was going to give him a shot uh -huh. and his fecal test. Yeah. She squirted the cheese on the table. Uh -huh. She goes, most of the time they're so busy licking up this cheese they don't know he wouldn't have it. <laughs> she goes, he's too smart for that. I said, yeah, I didn't say we don't eat cheese at this house. <laughs> Besides, that's not even cheese. No, it's not. <laughs> but I can see why she uses that. For to calm him down, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he would have been he he likes his uh pears and banana don't you but he can't he he's not distractible he's too, no, he's uh, too focused. focused he's very and about the tear stains she said uh, i have a seven pounder and i don't know what a seven pounder is maybe a, a seven pound dog yeah and she said and he has the same problem and it's just, you know, nothing you can do. The, the product they used to sell, um, Angel Eyes, mm -hmm. the reason that that one is no longer effective mm -hmm. is because they used to have antibiotics in it. Oh, that's not good. And um, when the, the CDC or whoever the yeah. FDA yeah. found out about that, they they made them take the antibiotics yeah. off. That's not good. And they no longer works but no that's not good yeah it's not good for mm -hmm. the environment the environment yeah. is not good for so hmm. yeah it anyway. we had I was admiring your come, I was admiring your I know you don't like to show your feet you know, I, I'm <laughs> about my, my mom got feet. new slippers these are bionics yeah they're, they're cute very comfy yeah they make the best slippers yeah they have a nice see how good the Tybee wants to say hello to you guys. <laughs> Tybee, I'm trying to show my shoes. Yeah, those yeah, are nice. It's really supportive. Um, what was I going to say? QVC. <laughs> yeah, QVC is... They have good deals on jewelry. I've really been happy with that necklace. I call it my uh, don't touch your face necklace. Anytime you feel like you want to touch your face, you just touch, touch, touch the necklace. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah. They had a really good deal on, uh, it's a simulated diamond. 
Dominique. They had a set of. I think it was Is that girl's one. second best friend? <laughs> <laughs> Dominique. <laughs> it was like four when your best friend ghosts you, <laughs> go to Dominique. Sizes of uh, earrings uh -huh. for forty dollars. I almost went on. It's like, no, I don't need four different diamond studs. But they tempt me a lot of times. Little boy. My mom got some fabric. You got this on uh, Joanne's? Oh, yeah. These are cute. Pineapple. Oh, I like this combination. I do too. I really like that one. They're pretty. You're going to make little gift card holders? I'm going to try. We'll see how they turn out. <laughs> but it's time I cranked up my new sewing machine. I got going. If those turn out well, then I'll move on to a more challenging project. But it was so much fun to pick the fabric out. Yeah, that is a fun. Oh, it's, it's like it's like picking out paint for a good replacement yeah. for candy shop. <laughs> Tybee's ready to throw the ball. Anyways, guys, I think I'm going to wrap up the vlog here. Like I said, I hope you guys are all staying healthy and happy and making the best of laying low. <laughs> and I hope this video was enjoyable. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.